When you think of Lamborghini, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Probably the mind-blowing speed, the jaw-dropping designs, and the roar of those incredible engines, right? You're not alone. Lamborghini is synonymous with supercars, but did you know there's a whole hidden side to this automotive legend? Imagine a time when Lamborghini was born out of pure frustration with none other than Ferrari. That's right, our story begins with a fiery rivalry that led to the birth of an icon. The company was founded by none other than Ferruccio Lamborghini, who wasn't satisfied with his Ferrari and decided to create something even more extraordinary. Enter the Lamborghini Miura, the first road-going mid-engine supercar. This baby was an absolute game-changer, stealing the hearts of car enthusiasts worldwide. But wait, there's more. We've all drooled over posters of the Countach, Diablo, Murcielago and Aventador, right? These are the true rock stars of the Lamborghini world. But what about those hidden gems that share the Lamborghini badge, but don't always get the spotlight they deserve? Picture this, a four-seater Lamborghini, perfect for a stylish family getaway. Or how about a Lamborghini that looks suspiciously like a Ferrari, raising some eyebrows and sparking debates in the world of automotive design? Lamborghini has ventured into territory you might not expect. They've dabbled in trucks, yes trucks. Plus, they've even ventured into the world of motorcycles, because why not add a dash of adrenaline to your two-wheel life? And last, but certainly not least, a Lamborghini appears to be an inspiration for the Tesla Cybertruck. Can you believe it? A Lamborghini with hints of the future right under its hood. So let's dive into the secret side of Lamborghini, a world of innovation, controversy, and incredible cars you've never seen. Lamborghini Espada. Following the success of the Miura, in the early 1960s, Lamborghini followed up with a four-seat Grand Tourer. The Espada's design is very much of its time, but nobody could argue with the 3.9-litre V12 under the hood, making 345 horsepower in the car's most powerful iteration. For a car that's mostly forgotten, it was incredibly successful for Lamborghini. Between 1968 and 1978, a total of 1,217 models were built, making it Lamborghini's best-selling vehicle until the Countach took the world by storm. Lamborghini Design 90. Before Lamborghini bought the Italian motorcycle company Ducati, the supercar manufacturer took a crack at building its own superbike. Most of the Design 90 was outsourced, but it was meant to be Lamborghini dipping a toe in the motorbike world's water. It was built by Boxer Bikes, and the engine was a 130 horsepower unit supplied by Kawasaki. It was constructed using an aluminum frame and a fiberglass body to get the weight down to 400 pounds. The project was shelved just a year in when Chrysler bought Lamborghini with just six of the 50 ordered built. Lamborghini Islero. Also following the Miura and at the same time as the Espada, Lamborghini built a replacement for the update of its first sports car, the 350 GT. The 400 GT was replaced by the 4.0-litre V12-powered four-seater Elero. It was fast for its day, with its 325 horsepower propelling it 60 miles per hour in 6.4 seconds and giving it a top speed of 154 miles per hour. Unfortunately, its styling was instantly forgettable, and the Islero was consigned to the production bin after just one year. Only 250 models were built before 1969 ended. Lamborghini Jarama. Almost as unforgettable was the Jarama. Rather than adapting the Islero to work with new US safety standards, Lamborghini built a new car on a shortened version of Esparta's platform. It was heavier than the outgoing car, but the V12 was upgraded to 365 horsepower to offset the extra weight. It's definitely an interesting looking car with a more modern take on the Esparta. And we love the covered headlights that are all kinds of 1970s cool. The Jarama was moderately successful and ran from 1970 to 1976 with 328 units built. Lamborghini Uraco. Continuing the theme of four-seater Lamborghini models, the Uraco is one of Lamborghini's oddest looking models. From 1973 to 1979, the Uraco had three options for the engine. Available as a 2.0, 2.5, or 3.0 litre V8, the most powerful P300 model laid down 247 horsepower and could hit 60 miles per hour in 5.6 seconds. 
only 776 were built, but its low numbers make it a less desirable model amongst collectors. Its bland styling is uncontroversial by usual standards, let alone Lamborghinis. It holds up a lot better than the outright ugly Esparta, though. Lamborghini Jalpa. The silhouette didn't hit the spot, but evolved into the reasonably successful Jalpa. It arrived in 1981 and was sold in 1989 when Chrysler bought Lamborghini and the development of the Diablo started. The Jalpa was the last V8-powered Lamborghini until the Urus showed up and used a 3.5-litre version of the Silhouette's lump, making 255 horsepower. It took its place in the lineup as the relatively inexpensive alternative to the Countach and was a lot easier to drive. Only 410 units were sold, and some came with the optional big rear wing similar to the one on the Countach. Lamborghini LM002 The LM002 is probably the most well-known of the more obscure Lamborghini models. It was the result of two prototypes intended for military use, but weren't good enough for service. Five versions of Lamborghini Militaria series models were built, but only the LM002 made it to production. Just 300 units were sold, and Rambo Lambo owners included Colonel Gaddafi, Pablo Escobar, and Saddam Hussein's son, Uday. The final LM002 version came with the V12 from the Lamborghini Countach at the front, but Lamborghini tried different engines and configurations. For those wanting crazy power, the Class 1 offshore powerboat spec Lamborghini L804 Type 7.2 litre marine V12 was an option. Lamborghini Countach Evoluzione. There are some insane Lamborghini concepts out there. The Countach Evoluzione is often forgotten. It was a rolling test bed for new ideas and was developed by Horatio Pagani when he was head of Lamborghini's development department. Pagani believed carbon fibre was the future and practically begged Lamborghini to let him start experimenting with it. However, the brass told him that if Ferrari wasn't using the expensive composite, Lamborghini didn't need to. Pagani was having none of it though and got a bank loan to purchase an autoclave to create carbon fiber with. Using that, he started a composites department. Using the then new material, Pagani shaved a whopping 1,100 pounds off the weight of a standard Countach. Lamborghini pointed out the Evoluzione was too expensive to build and would cost a fortune to repair when it crashed. The brass nixed the idea, but Ferrari then released the composite-based F40. Pagani left a few years later, taking his autoclave with him and using it to build the Zonda. 